I got you. No, you let me know. I'll get them for you, babe. Okay, and back we go. Bing bong. Ah, mayonnaise. What's too much? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, with what's coming up, uh, the movie was done by a company in Ireland. And I. Boulder. Yes, yeah. Boulder, that's right. And um, they have sold the rights of the animation. So they have. It's moving. It's, I, 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 it's going to be moving. It's moving somewhere. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Okay. I know nothing. Yes. But any... it's all on Equestria Daily. Like, no. is that they, I mean, it's like they think people are not paying attention. Somebody knows. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you have any advice, as a veteran voice actor yourself, do you have any advice for the G5 voice actors, whoever they may be? Well, a couple of my students are in the uh, uh, YouTube uh, 2D version. Anna Sandy is uh, one of my, my students uh, in voice, and she's a brilliant voice actor. You will love her. She's playing a scene. Animation is something else, but we won't go there. Uh, we won't go there. Love everybody. Um, just can't just chin. Over there. It's like a little filter. Hitches. Yeah. I have a I have a thing for hitch, and you'll find out why. Dot 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 later. Okay. Um. That's to come in our next interview. Okay. I'll bookmark that then. Bookmark that. More more fun to come. More rolling rolling pony balls. Yes. <laughs> Okay. More games and more fun. Games fun. More, more lunacy. Yeah, <laughs> more. I share the lunacy. Yeah. That's my hashtag. Always gotta. Yeah. You always gotta it go. Really bit, is share yeah. the lunacy is my hashtag. It's like Arthur Dent. You gotta go a bit mad now and then. Go bigger the home, I say. Yeah. I mean, why? We only come around this way once yeah. this time. Well, why not? I bet. Yeah. Look at. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like a canopy of unicorns and balloons over yeah. my head, right? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna wrap up. Um, what do you think? Uh, so, what do you think is going to be the uh, the future of fandom over the next couple of years? What do you see? Say, so where do you see yourself? I think yourself the fandom is going to explode. Yeah. I think it's going to get bigger. Yeah. I think that it's going to take over the world. That's my hope. Anyway. Yes. My hope is that um, the brony fandom takes over the world. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, I am witness to it everywhere I go. People who know nothing about MLP, know nothing about really anything, and they're like, what are you dressed up as? Yeah. <laughs> and I go, myself, I know it's like, yeah, right? Um, but, you know, the, or they'll see my coat, you know, and they'll see, that, that they'll see this. And they'll go, what, what is, what is that? Yeah. You know, and there's cutie marks, every cutie mark in the world is on this coat. If you've never seen this coat, it's it a has every coat. single cutie mark of every single character ever. And at the next convention I have, I'm going to get uh, bronies to guess. Whoever guesses will win a prize. Okay. They've got, because there's ones that are really obscure where you're like, oh, what is that? People have tried to do it here. But I mean, I've got this thing here, and then I've got the forum, the, the Freedom Forum um, character over here that I played yes. as well. But people are like, they're, they're drawn to the color, they're drawn to energy. So when I'm in the airport, bronies have, don't have their plushies out or anything, and I'll hear, Ellie! Like, and I'll be like, Pony! And you know the energy, right? The yeah. energy. And my hope is that I'm, I'm converting. I'm converting people. Because yeah. I sit down with them. I met these two ladies that were in the airport coming from Toronto, and they were going to Florida, and they were like, you're just so colorful, and you're just so whatever. Because I, I I heard them, I overheard them say, well, maybe we should have a glass of wine. And I went, oh, have a glass of wine. <laughs> They laughed and they were like, "Dude, you're so colorful." And I said, "They said, what? What do you? What do you do?" And I said, "I'm an actor, and I'm on my way to one team pony convention." And they were fascinated by what that was. And they went, "I wish we were going to Texas. I'd go." It was like, and it sort of said to me, just really like last night there was a man in the bar. He wasn't here for the, my little party. He was a business guy. And he had a few cocktails and he got his nerve up and he came up and he was like, I knew, what? Everybody has colors in their hair and ears on their head and these little, what is it? And 
we explained it to him and he goes, I love this. Mm -hmm. And that's why I feel that the world is a little bit behind the eight ball. The Romies get it. They get there's yeah. safety here, and there's numbers here, and there's love here, no judgment. and no judgment, and you, you're, you, that's what we want. I just want to go, oh, I feel so safe. Mm. I love everybody. I just love everybody. It's so fantastic. I just go, <laughs> you know, and when a, when a convention's over, it's like, it's not that you go back to a life that isn't filled with it because it's constant, you know, yeah. it's constant in my world. But it doesn't have a phantom like it is. Yes. And when we went online, we were still separate. Like, yeah. I mean, it wasn't the same. No. So when we get to really come together and hug, like, you know, people are standing waiting to hug me yeah. when this interview is over. And I will hug every single phone because that's what we need to do. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is for we need to come together. Exactly. Um, do you have, what would you say the best, uh, the best uh, tactic, the best measure for coming together at something like this? The, be the best, the best way to promote friendship at conventions like this. The best way. Know that you are loved. Be fearless. Know that you are equal. There is no better. There is no worse. There is no up. There is no down. There is no smart. There is no dumb. There is no old. There is no young. There is no colors. There is nothing. We are the same. There is one energy here. Yeah. And as I say at every convention, don't be afraid. I say, if you see a pony sitting by themselves in the hallway, don't exclude them. Go up to them and invite them to come to your table. Which is why I always say, no matter where I am, come and sit with me. Don't feel shy. Don't be shy. Yeah. That's why we come here. Just come and sit. Well, yeah, I always, I, I always say to people, if, if you see someone over there and you feel a little shy, remember, they might be shy too. They might be as well. I always go, pony, do you and, want to hug? And they go, yeah. They kind of look and go, are you talking to me? And I'm like, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah I mean, you. I mean if, if you know the other person might be a bit shy as well, you know, there's that connection immediately, you think? Because people feel shy because people don't include people. Yeah, yeah, so you are. And I go, a convention is meant to include everybody. Exactly. That's why I'm like, it's like church for me. Turn to your neighbor, speak to your neighbor, love your neighbor. Yeah. Hi, Pony. Hi, Pony. That's all you have to do, yeah. and it'll make somebody's day to be included. How many conventions have you gone to where you've heard people go, I met so many of these friends this week? Um, every, every convention. Every convention you go to is an now. opportunity to make yeah. new friends and not feel alone and right. not be depressed. Exactly. And not feel sad about, you know, not being part of something. And, and there's no need to feel alone just because you feel a bit shy because there's lots of other people who feel a little bit that way too. Hey, nobody and believes this, but I am morbidly shy. Yeah. I, you know, I had, I was labeled as retarded as a child and demented. Those were the words used, mm. and I had, uh, you know, I was ostracized and beaten. And I, I, because I, I displayed. At the time, they didn't know what it was. I was put on Ritalin and all kinds of things, and you know, I was shy because the world. Um, I lived in a fantasy world of my own creation. And I was shy of the other world because I was afraid of the other world because it hurt me. So I was like, I would, I preferred my imaginary friends. And it wasn't until um, I literally decided that I was going to just believe what I believe, and if somebody didn't like what I believed. It didn't matter. They're the ones that are mean. I don't want to be a part of the mean group. Exactly. I don't want to be there. And I developed a kind of, I don't know, a, a persona, I guess, that helped me talk to everybody. I just started talking to everybody. And I just would talk, and then they would go, stop talking, stop talking, and talk too much, and talk too much, stop moving, stop, I displayed, I did, I had a lot of, my autism act when I was younger was quite, I'm, I can control my display now because I, you know, I figured out what was happening, but I just became this sort of chatty, chatty, chatty Kathy. Hi, everybody, and then, like, you know, people don't know what to do with that because it's so the other way, rather than pull away from it and go, 
and live in my own little world and wonder what it's like over there, I went, those other people have been hurt. That's why they're not yeah. nice. That's they're why just, they're shy. They're actually shy, too. Yeah. They're just bold and angry because they've been hurt. And if I invite them to come and be with me in my world, things change. Yeah. It changes. It melts the the ice around hearts that have been hurt, right? But most of the time, you know, people don't love themselves. Mm. So how can they possibly love anybody else? Right? How, can, how can people learn to love themselves more? You, we've got to love ourselves first or we can't possibly love anybody else. How can, how can and we're someone... taught not to love ourselves. It's what the institution does to us. How do you overcome that? To learn to love you have to believe that you're, you are angelic. That you were born into this this realm as a human being. Do you know how hard that is? Yes. You're not an animal. You're not a flower. You're not you're not a butterfly. You're not. You are a human being that can communicate and feel and choose and have free will. And our lessons here are to love one another. Mm. That is the lesson. And we keep coming back. We keep coming here to try to learn that lesson. And it starts with, I must love myself because I am you. There's no I in T. Every single being and soul on this planet is one energy. Everything. There's not one animal, one plant, nothing. We are this vibrating, beautiful energy together. And if we take the I out of it, the we are beautiful. Yeah. Then you realize if you go, I don't like myself, I'm this, you're saying that about me. Yeah. Because